Think of a conversation you had recently that made you smile. A really good conversation where you felt heard and understood. What if every conversation was like that? While you might not be able to achieve that with everyone, there is a way to finding the right people to have those kinds of conversations with. And it's so important to surround yourself with those people when it comes to collaborating, particularly in music. What is a conversation? Well, playing music is a way of communicating with people. As a fiddle player, I like going to traditional Irish sessions. And when I go, I always listen first to what other people are playing, and then I'll join in, or I might lead with a set of tunes, and other people will join in with what I'm playing. And I think it's a really respectful way of interacting with people. And by doing the same thing when talking to people, it can lead to much more engaging conversations. Personally, I haven't always had such engaging conversations, being the shy type. But then I learned a couple of foreign languages, and I found that I was much more easily able to relate to people. When I'm speaking Spanish or Russian, I'm much more rational than I am emotional, and I realized I could do the same when I'm speaking English. So with that knowledge, as well as my experience in communication through music, I've become the authentic person I am today. What I want to talk to you about today is how to collaborate with others. My experience is in music, but It can be applied to many other disciplines. Throughout the years, I've played in quite a few different folk bands. One in particular was a steampunk Cayley band. The music was very much in the Celtic fusion genre, and I really wanted to combine Irish fiddle tunes with modern dance music. The leader of that band was very keen to work with me, and he had the, all the equipment, so I thought, well, this is going to be great. So, I recorded a few tunes, told him my ideas, he told me what he thought, and I thought, well, that sounds good. So he thought, well, okay, let me take that away and um, come up with something. Well, what he came up with was a little bit disappointing. <laughs> to me, that music sounds like um, 1980s aerobics music which I was not at all going for. So I actually, I didn't tell anyone, and actually the music ended up in our set list. We were supposed to do a whole album together, but it didn't happen for three reasons. One, I didn't really know what I wanted. Two, There were a lot of conversations that should have happened, but didn't happen. And three, it turns out we weren't a good fit as two musicians working together. Luckily, last year, I got the Developing Your Creative Practice grant from Arts Council England to, for my own Celtic fusion band um, to make some new music and to make an album. So I learned from my mistakes in the past um, to make sure that I could make the music that I want to. And now I can share with you how to use this information to collaborate with others yourselves. Here are my five steps to successful collaboration. Step one is to be your authentic self. Like how I used my, exper my experience in speaking foreign languages to be more free in my conversations in English, you need to find a way to be more open and honest in your conversations. If you don't respectfully tell people how you really feel and think, then they're not going to know. That's the mistake I made in my previous band. I just went along with everything with a smile, and nobody knew I was unhappy. Also, on this topic, you need to think about if the person you're working with is actually a good fit. Think honestly if, there, if it's going to work. There's usually three factors that come into play. One, they have to have some kind of genuine interest in the topic. Two, they need to be available. And three, they need to be capable of collaborating in some way. And if all of those factors are in there and it's going to work, then that's great. But if it's not going to work, then you, as soon as you realize 
you need to speak up because it's going to save so many emotions on both sides. Step number two is to know what you want or have some idea. If you go up to Scotland or Ireland, people there generally know what Celtic fusion music is. Here in Lincolnshire, it's not so common. So I've had to spend the time to think about what it is I'm trying to achieve musically, what are my goals, so that uh, when I approach potential musicians that I want to work with, or venues where I want my band to play in, I can quickly and easily explain what it is we do. Also, when you know what you want, then it's important to ask for it. This becomes important in business transactions, for example, if you're putting on an event, or if you're recording music in a studio. Everybody involved needs to agree on who's doing what by when and what happens if it doesn't get done. And it's important to get everything in writing, even if it's just an informal text or email. It just needs to be something for people to look back to so that there aren't any unexpected surprises further on down the line. Also, if you receive any contracts, it's important to actually read through them just to see if they've snuck in anything. So you want to also avoid unexpected surprises. If you're working in a group, for example, a group of musicians in a band, everyone needs to be clear on who has the final say. Some bands are organized democratically. Others, like mine, has one person that makes the final decisions. Recently, I worked with someone who came highly recommended to me as an expert in dance music. Again, I wanted to revisit this idea of combining the Irish fiddle tunes with modern dance music. This time, stakes were higher because money was involved for my grant, so I knew I had to be very specific about what it was I was trying to achieve. So again, I recorded some tunes, sent them through, told them my ideas, and he sent back his sketch, which was, again, disappointing. So I thought, how am I going to explain this to him? I spent four days deliberating. Finally, I came back to him and I said, well, it sounds nice. It's not actually what I want. Can we rework this? I want something to sound, I want it to sound a bit more ravey, like you're standing in a nightclub. So we reworked it, and he did something to make my fiddle sound like a synthesizer. And now I have my new track, Drunken Goodbye, which is a bit of a challenge for the band to play live, especially getting the guitar to sound like a synthesizer. But I feel excited about it every time I hear it. The third step is to be curious. Don't be afraid to try different things. If something doesn't work, it doesn't matter. Just try something else. In my band, we've had to work and rework different tracks to get them sounding good, but also in line with my vision. Curiosity also applies to when you're looking for people to work with. I like to think of it like how job interviews should be, where you're looking at the other person's skills, knowledge, and experience to try to understand how they could contribute to your project, which leads me to point number four. Assume the other person knows something that you don't. So in my projects, I have my own ideas, but I'm very interested in hearing what other people's ideas are. In music, I realize I don't know all there is to know about the different styles of music that I can combine with fiddle tunes. And my band introduced me to Stray Cat Strut. I had no idea what that was before. Um, I'd heard it in music, but actually they suggested it, and it was really good because we can play a fiddle tune over it and improvise, and we can stretch it out for as long as we need. Also, if you're working with an expert and it's your project, you have to be careful not to give away all of the creative tasks 
to the other person because you might end up with something you're not happy with. And my fifth and final step is to be open to change. So there are these two tunes, 250 to Vigo and Superfly. And I really like the way that I played them with the first tune going slowly and the second tune, Superfly, going fast. And I thought, well, I'd like to introduce these tunes to the band. So I first worked with my guitarist and my bass player, and we thought, well, we need to break it up a bit. So we put a guitar riff in the middle. That guitar riff continues on underneath the second tune for a while. But in order for that to work, we had to slow down the second tune a bit, which I was a little bit resistant to at first, but I thought, well, that sounds cool, so let's go with it. Then we brought in the drummer, and he thought we should speed up the first tune. And I was really resistant to that at first. But I thought, OK, OK, now I've got to try it. So eventually I said, OK, let's try it. And when we did, actually, I liked the way that he played it. And I'm so glad that I stopped myself from being so resistant, because now we've got a track that everyone's contributed to, and we can all be really proud of. So when you have the right conversations with the right people, you're on your way to successful collaborations. When you combine all of these elements of being authentic, knowing what you want, being curious, assuming the other person knows something that you don't, and being open to change, then it can make a path for others involved in your project to feel more like they've been heard and understood and like they've accomplished something. So this is the way to achieve your goals through collaboration. Thank you.